Hello and welcome to the Trending Now podcast for this Friday, November the 22nd, 2024. I'm Louis Bucko and thanks for joining us as we recap the week that was on Trending Now. We should catch every Monday to Friday, 7 p.m., 11.30 on CHCH, chch.com and streaming live on our Trending Now YouTube page. Lots to get to on today's show, so let's get right into it. I'm very pleased to be joined by the host and producer of Trending Now. Hi. My name is Dan Baldwin, and uh, I'm not going to pump your tires. I've done that the last few weeks. You're still doing a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. You really are. Um, I don't know, like, if you're feeling, like, not that I'm saying you weren't comfortable at the beginning, but you're really hitting this groove right now that uh, it's it's really it, nice to see. Starting to take a lot, yeah, get into a, well, a groove of things. I, yeah. I know, but, like, it is, it is a lot of work, right? Yeah. And, like, I've, like, I've been saying that since this show started, since this podcast started, when I brought on <laughs> Laura and Nicole and Kelly and all these people to point out that it's a lot of work. And I will mention that, like, you this week, again, just absolutely crushed it. So uh, <laughs> Thank you. I know I don't say nice things to you uh, off camera, but on camera, I'm going to say nice things to you. I don't know. You've been pretty nice to me lately. Yeah, well, yeah. except for your smell, Guess but I... uh, we'll have to fix that. Um, let's get right into it uh, with Trump's cabinet picks. Uh, Matt Gates. this one's... Uh, Last week, he was, uh, you know, named as the nominee right away. Instant backlash. Yeah. Um, he resigns from Congress. And then yesterday says, uh, yeah, never mind. I don't want to be a distraction, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, predictable. What have you heard? People you've talked to. What do, what do you make of this? I mean, so I interviewed somebody, and that interview will come up later mm -hmm. on the show. But um, he was saying how... Um, Henry Giroux was saying how like he kind of had no other like choice yeah. in a sense is what uh, I think I'm like trying to think back to the interview but I, yeah. I apologize for taking it wrong <laughs> but yeah like it was just one of those things where he was getting a lot of backlash like all around right so it was it's one of those things where he wasn't he wasn't maybe going to get the support that he expected mm -hmm. to get. So, so, he, he, so these uh, cabinet picks need to be Senate approved. Uh, the Republicans hold control of both the Senate, House, and presidency. So the one thing I, I realized is that even Donald, like, even Donald Trump, with this giant mandate, he still can't do whatever he wants. There are still going to be some checks and balances. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about some of the people who probably in any other cabinet wouldn't get through, like a Linda McMahon or a RFK Jr. Um, but Matt Gates, there were some credible allegations uh, that, A, he had paid for sex, B, that he had sex with an underage woman, a 17-year-old woman who he paid, um, that illicit drug use, um, all these things. Uh, the thing about this is that, like, he was named the nominee, and then he quits Congress. <laughs> yeah. The Congress, which, like, days before... And that's the reason why, Days like, before, he had just spent a whole election campaign running for. Yep. And then, literally, like, House Speaker Mike Johnson was saying how... He's like, oh, you know, like it's opening a Pandora's box if we, if we like, you release know, the release the report. Yeah. And it's like he he was a, he was a, a congressman before that though. Yeah. Like it, it was like it's not like somebody who's like retired. Like this is just my opinion yeah, yeah. again, right? No, like, it, he, and like he, so uh, just reading this now, Matt Gates, uh, he's not going to go back to Congress. Yes, I, um, there was some sort of speculation on well, if he resigned from this Congress then could he just take his seat when Congress is sworn in? Um, which is just like a waste of time, a waste of money. Like you just spent a whole election, which he easily won. It's Florida, it's, he's Matt Gates. His dad is a very powerful person in Florida politics. Um, but it's just like a waste of time that like, this is American politics. This is what they do. Like it's like you ran for this campaign and now he quits. And I feel like now that like, like Gates is out of the picture now. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like the, the spotlight is more on Pete Hexett. Uh, yeah, because who, uh, who again? he's also <laughs> there who? are allegations, <laughs> allegations, and uh, he has admitted that uh, it's been I don't know if it's been like it's proven. been dropped, it, but yeah, uh, he's paid a settlement. Right? Yeah, he's paid a settlement. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Any, okay, uh, charges have been dropped. Um, Trump says Trump said in his first time around, President-elect Donald Trump, ugh, which still <laughs> just hurts me to say, uh, that he only hires the best people. Um, <laughs> right, but that's what he said. That's what he said the first time around. I only hire the best people. All those people that he hired that first go around, Mike uh, Mike Pence, uh, his chief of staff, uh, Mike Mulvaney, all these people who he hired, didn't endorse him this time around. Sat on the sidelines. Uh, were actively talking against him. 
Uh, it's it's interesting to see what he's going to try to do. And if these two weeks of cabinet appointments is any indication, then we're in for a long four years. Yeah, I know. That's literally what my, like, the person that I, like, spoke to, Henry Giro, he yeah. was also like, yeah, this is going to be quite a, like, a long four years as well. And it's, like, it's a little stress because, like, there's also... So Pete Hagseth, he, I mean, have you heard about the tattoo situation? Yes, that he may or may not have a white supremacist yeah. style tattoo. I've, yeah, so that is like quite alarming. So, I mean, with with Trump, should I be surprised? No, but it's just one of those things as well. It's like, where, where, are, we, where are we headed? What is going to happen this next four years? Like, yeah. and I, I also feel like, Actually, you know what? I'm not going to get into that. I'm not even going to get into that. You're going to be canceled. You're going to be canceled. You're going to be careful. I'm not going to say anything. This is one thing, too. And, uh, you know, the thing about Gates, um, and he wasn't going to get the support of senators. That was the report yesterday, is that Trump told him, you're not going to get the votes, withdraw your name so you don't look stupid. Um, The thing about the Senate and the House I've learned this week is that senators really look down on the House, right? Like, there's 50 senators, or whatever it is, 100 senators, two from each state. Um, there's 500 something congressmen and women, um, and the Senate really thinks that they're that much better. So that it was never going to happen for for Matt Gates, but RFK, that might still happen. Linda McMahon, tell us a little bit about Linda McMahon, the uh, the pick for the uh, Secretary of Education. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm literally <laughs> just now starting this this pack, so I haven't. I've okay. been fo- so focused yeah. on Pete Hexen yeah, and, yeah. and Gates and Pam Bondi that I haven't gotten Pam a chance. Bondi, yeah. yeah, so now she's been um, yep. uh, nominated the for the uh, Attorney General. But I also read something yesterday that, like, a lot of people aren't even phased by all his controversial picks because, like, everyone expected this from him. <laughs> and it's also one of those things where, like, some people are afraid that it's going to, like, Trump's just going to come in with the, like, my way or the highway kind of. Yeah. If that wasn't the article. That was, like, from yeah. people at I, other, like, interviews and stuff that I've yeah. done. Um, I don't, I don't. Again, it's, remember it's, like two weeks ago we talked about this when he got elected? Like we just both sat here and we were like, I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, yep. I, it's, it's interesting because I'm watching like less American news. Like I don't know why if it's just like just – because I, I was pretty – I was a pretty religious and I know we talked about this on the show uh, <laughs> like Joe and Mika uh, going to Mar-a-Lago. I think Jason did that story, right? Yes, on, he uh, did. On Tuesday. Like I'm, I'm a big Morning Joe guy. I watch Morning Joe on MSNBC – uh, Joe Scarborough is a former Republican congressman from Florida, so I feel like that gives him some credibility. Mika's dad was an uh, ambassador for a very, very long time. So the show has some gravitas, I thought, and I was a little off-put by the fact that they went down to Mar-a-Lago, and that's, that was also a, a very familiar feeling for a lot of other people who watch Morning Joe. <laughs> right. A lot of people uh, speaking out against it on both sides, yeah. really. Yeah, there was a lot of shock there. Um a lot of backlash. Yeah. And it's like... But okay. what are you going to do? He's going to be president for the next four years, right? Like, you have to be able to cover him. Like, that's that's true. And uh, Willie Geist the next day came in. And again, I, I say I've been watching less, but clearly I've been watching the same amount. Willie Geist, who's the third host on Morning Joe, said... And he put it the right way. He said, you know how critical we've been of Trump. That's not going to change. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It seemed like a little kiss the ring-ish when uh, Joe and Mika went down there. So it was a little side tangent. I know we didn't say we were going to talk about this, but I remember we talked about it on the show here. So yeah. that's why I went into it. Um, yeah. Anything else with Gates or with the uh, the cabinet? Like, uh, I know your Giroux interview is going to run on yeah. tonight's show, but uh, what were your main takeaways from from that? Uh, I mean, Gates seems to be like the big like focus right now um, and like what he was going to do, like how this kind of like unfolded and and stuff like that. So that was a big thing. Pete Hex at this is quite uh taking the spotlight but jd vance was actually making quite a few appearances on capitol hill this week Mm -hmm. first with matt gates because matt gates was going into that meeting to talk to i believe it was senators or some some congress people um uh, this was before he withdrew his name and then after that the next day he went he was with pete hexit like you know the republicans are really trying to like show their support for them obviously it didn't work out with gates because he withdrew his name but yeah, and I think, you know, I think it, I don't want to say it's encouraging because Matt Gates should never have been anywhere close 
to being the attorney general of the United States, just based on, um, you know, his experience in practicing law, his character, mm -hmm. the fact that there is an open ethics investigation into him, well, I guess closed now that the, that he's not a member of Congress, like so unqualified for the job that like if he had been approved, then it was like, oh, shit, we're in trouble. Like all hell could break loose in America. He would be Trump's guy. But a lot of people saying that about Pete Hegseth, too, like yeah. putting him in charge of the military. A lot of the people who in Trump's first term who were in charge of the uh, military, like General Mark Milley, uh, stopped him from Trump's big plans for parades, like mm -hmm. marching tanks down the street and said, that's a little much. That's a little North Korea ish. But Pete Hegseth, who was a Fox News host last week, is just going to say yes to whatever the president says. Which brings us back to the whole how qualified are these people for these positions? There is one takeaway from my interview, like the, like one thing um, uh, the Henry Giroux was saying how Marco Rubio seems yeah. qualified for his position, but... Secretary of State, right? Yes. Marco Rubio, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but again, it, it's just like a lot of a lot of it just goes back to loyalty and it's like yeah. the, the other fear is like what happens when somebody who's not qualified for a position takes that on yeah <laughs> aside from the extreme views on on yeah and and then what i've read things. and what i've been hearing is that a lot of these jobs the military the number two person will be someone who's more qualified so pete hegseth if he's approved could be the guy who goes on tv and is the face but there's somebody actually there with experience making decisions and uh who's trump's uh, chief of staff too uh she also uh ran so her campaign Susie wiles she didn't get Susie much pushback wiles. either but chief of staff's a huge job too so oh um, well, we forgot to mention tulsi gabbard as well oh, she, was, tulsi she, gabbard. she was getting quite <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, the Department of <laughs> National Intelligence. Um, she has parroted <laughs> Russian talking points. She has parroted Chinese uh, communist talking points. Um, yeah. And Elon Musk and, and that, we haven't even talked about that. Oh, for man. the uh, Doge, Doge. Yeah, let's not call it that. Uh, <laughs> the Department of Government Efficiency. I will. Ref I'm not calling it Doge. I will call it the Department. Who also they put uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene in charge of that too. By the way, so. Oh, just deep breaths. We're going to get through this. Okay, let's talk about something fun. We're going to get through this. All right. Uh, I don't know if this is fun, but it's uh, it's, it's getting a lot of backlash. Uh, Jaguar. Oh, I the thought we were... Uh, sorry, I forgot. We'll get to Kendrick Lamar or, or the uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Mr. I want to talk about Ronaldo. Yeah, you sure. Talk? Yeah, okay, okay, just okay. real quick. Jaguar, uh, a brand new logo. Got rid of the Jaguar. Um, again, talk about backlash. Uh, this is getting a lot of it. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because I saw... I was reading an article today and like they were actually commenting, like literally replying to every... Like a lot of... Like the comments, the and like yeah, like, the, yeah, like I, <laughs> I read an article this morning, and I don't know if um maybe I was like half asleep, but <laughs> I literally saw so many like retweets from like or replies from Jaguar being like it's our future and it's this and that, so I think they were just trying to pivot to um like start their like whole electric lineup mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. than anything. But it's, it has not been received well. I think no. Elon Musk was also chiming in, too. Well, they're calling it, like, woke, the commercials and, like, the, the advertisement yeah. that they ran. Um, they didn't really mention the car much at all. Um, I mean, people just, who cares? Are you going to buy a Jaguar? Then who cares? Yeah. Like, do, are, do, have thing. you ever owned a Jaguar? No. Like, just, who cares? But a lot People of get angry about things that don't affect them in any way. Like, why are you so mad about a commercial for a car that A, you can't afford, and B, you were never gonna buy in the first place. Like, why do you have to go online and be like, stupid woke company, oh my God, like blah, 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 like they're I ruining history. Like, it's stupid, it's stupid. Everybody needs to calm down. I think this is maybe what they also wanted. You never know, right? Yeah. Like, if they wanted, cause like, this is something that I brought up, like when I was talking to my fiance this morning and I was like talking about this, he was like, he's like, well, think about it. He's like, when was the last time somebody actually spoke about Jaguar? And I was like, yeah, didn't they only sell like 3,000 cars in the States last year or something I think like so. that? It was something like 2,500. So. Okay. And maybe they just wanted the attention. So, And maybe mm -hmm. if they want to spark some debate and people to talk about Jack. It's been trending all week. It has been trending so all week. So maybe it is working out in their favor. Um, I have never watched a Mr. Beast video, ever. 
I've I know that he gets hundreds of millions of views. I know he's a big character. He's got a chocolate bar. I've seen the chocolate bars in this <laughs> grocery store. I've never sat down and watched a Mr. Beast interview video, whatever. Um, I have. But either. he did one with Cristiano Ronaldo. What's this all about? OK, so Cristiano Ronaldo launched his YouTube channel a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he did it, like within the first month or something, he got like millions of like subscribers mm -hmm. and he broke the record. Oh, Ronaldo and the, did. Yeah. Yes. And that record, like the person he beat was Mr. Beast. Oh. So he's been like teeing, he was teeing it up this week being like, oh, like, or a couple days ago being like, oh, like my next guest is going to like, you know, it's going to like break the internet and this, that, the third. So a lot of people thought it might be messy. Mm hmm was it? I, I, it wasn't messy oh so it was mr beast right yeah so but then like like i'm not a soccer fan like that but i would love to see an interview with messi and ronaldo mm -hmm. i would love to see that so um i just i like i don't get the you know i've never been like i'm not a youtube kid yeah. right i was like pre-youtube <clears throat> like because you're was old born. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. um yeah basically uh but like i just like i just like don't get like the idea of sitting down and watching a 50 minute youtube video that's right. why i try to keep my podcast like 20 minutes that's that's my attention span 20 minutes but like these videos and i know mr beast uh, just announced a new show uh it's gonna be on amazon um which was shot in toronto actually yes. and uh one of our former employees here was on that set brayden was Remember it? Brayden? Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, shout Brayden. out Brayden Neville. He was working on oh, that show. Great so, job, uh, Brayden. Yeah, so I think it's like a five million dollar prize. I don't understand. There was controversy around that too. Uh, you got big plans for the weekend? I have to. Oh, it's going to be a busy weekend for me. So I work tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. and then I have to drive all the. And that's in Markham. Ooh. And then I have to drive all the way to London for what? a housewarming party for my uh, sister in law. For London. my brother-in-law, sorry, my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah. So London, London. Mark him to London Mark on a to Saturday. London. That's a. Are you uh, driving back that night? <clears throat> probably, yeah. I, I just, I like to go back to my bed and sleep in my bed. It's <laughs> yeah. just, I can't, like. Yeah. Well, have fun. It's a lot of driving. What are, your what are you plans? doing Sunday? Um, it's my friend's birthday on Saturday, so mm -hmm. today we'll probably just be uh, go to bed and and sleep and mm -hmm. early and like I was just at in Vancouver, so I've been complaining about the time change and adjusting that whoa easy uh, <laughs> sorry so uh yeah today will be a sleep night because like oh, i like nice. i hope to be in bed by like 8 30 and then tomorrow will be like i hope to have my first adult beverage at like 1 30 p.m and you expect me not to make the old comments which one the old comments i didn't think i was an old comment i didn't set you up for that anyway Manisa, <laughs> i'm kidding I'm thanks kidding. for doing this appreciate it as always thank you all right Manisa Dana Ball and everybody she is uh hosting uh tonight uh seven o'clock or you know if you're watching this after the show which is likely um she did a great job all week so shout out to her all right i want to get to this uh story that was trending earlier this week uh after backtracking about his heritage amid the allegations about his company's bid for federal contracts uh liberal mp randy Boissonneau is leaving his cabinet post as employment minister. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his office made the announcement this week saying they agreed that the Edmonton MP should step away while he attempts to clear his name. Boissonneau was facing calls to resign following a National Post report saying the MP's grandmother was not Indigenous. Boissonneau had clarified that it was his adoptive mother and brother who were actually Métis, uh, Métis uh, when faced with questions about his family tree. His departure was announced minutes before MPs attended question period. He's been under intense scrutiny over reports from the National Post about his heritage. Uh, Boissonneau has since apologized for the shift in claims, but also faces allegations over a company he co-owns that claims to be Indigenous-owned and using that claim to apply for government contracts. Now, the report sparked calls for the minister to resign from both the Conservatives and the NDP, and the Tories continue to pile on, even since he stepped down from Cabinet, with uh, PC leader Pierre Paliev referencing a former Cabinet Minister and First Nations woman Jody Wilson-Raybould, who took shots at Trudeau for not removing him sooner. All right. It has been a busy, busy week overseas, and to discuss that, we bring in Trending Now writer and CHCH writer and uh, sometimes reporter here on Trending Now, Roger Collins. Great to see you, buddy. Hey, Louie. What's going on? Um, we got you the, uh, the lighthearted stuff today. Yeah, I know. I saw the rundown. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's start with Russia, because a couple of things happened this week. Mm -hmm. uh, a, Joe Biden uh, saying that Ukraine can use U.S. 
missiles, yeah. U.S. made missiles to fire into Russia, which is a change of policy, uh, but a pretty big uh, Russian strike this week. Tell us about it. Yeah, so in response to that, they fired an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's uh, something that could potentially carry a nuclear warhead. In this case, it didn't. But yeah, just to kind of respond to that uh, move by America, that was Russia's response, and uh, I think they struck something in like the D Dniep region or mm. something of other. Um, you know. This is clearly an escalation. Oh, 100. Or? It's definitely an escalation. Like, there's very little that takes place that isn't escalating this conflict. But I mean, uh, at this point, I kind of wonder what difference it will make. People talk about this being, you know, the leading steps up to nuclear war. The experts I spoke to today don't see it that way at all. A lot of this is just political stancing and awaiting. Trump to take office and the tit for tat kind of thing back and forth between the current administration, the next one, and Russia itself, right? So you have uh, a lot of things that the current Biden administration has promised Ukraine that hasn't come to fruition. It seems like they're kind of just trying to speed those things up before they leave. Yeah. Well, this was a complete reversal. Those missiles that can be used now to fire yeah. into Russia. Um, yeah. What are your experts saying when it comes to uh, when it comes to Trump? And, and what, what could happen uh, with Trump in, in office and, and what kind of change in policy? I haven't had anyone come forward and outright s like make a prediction. Mm -hmm. No one has a crystal ball. No one knows what's going to happen. The, the thing that's being weighed most is how does this war end? Because it seems like Trump is very adamant on making it come to a halt. Like, people are dying. This is a war. And we're, you know, a lot of money is being sent over there. And, like, times are tough here, right? So it's understandable why they want that to happen. But the concession here is, does Ukraine lose the territory that Russia has taken? Mm. And that's the ultimate question. How does this war end? And I don't think anyone really has a good prediction. Uh, worth pointing out that uh, this week also marked uh, the 1,000th day. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's heavy. Since the war had started, uh, makes it uh, doing quick math there. Just just under three years uh, since the war in Ukraine has started, and uh, in its in its official account, though, yeah. right? Like this goes back to the Maidan, uh, like revolution or coup yeah. or whatever you want to call it, back in 2014. So yeah. this has been Georgia, the annexation of Georgia. And, Precisely. And yeah, this goes uh, back a long time. Um, yeah, I mean. Like I said, it's a, it's a, it was a big week there for uh, for Russia. It was also a big week uh, when it comes to the Israel-Hamas uh, uh, conflict. Um, the well, that, ICC, yeah. what did the ICC do? So the, uh, I, what is the ICC, first of all? Well, what do they yeah, do? the International Criminal Court. It's uh, just a, a global body that tries to enforce international law. And in this case, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is being accused of committing war crimes in the ongoing war with Hamas. So, yeah, they issued an arrest warrant for him today. Um, a lot of people see it more of like as a as a symbolic thing. Like, in reality, he could be arrested if he steps foot in the wrong country that will enforce those measures. But in all likelihood, it's really no danger to the Israeli PM. Um, speaking of, uh, Joe Biden put out a pretty strong statement uh when the this was uh, made saying mm -hmm. we support israel you know we don't see this as legitimate trudeau a little different tone yeah, yeah absolutely and like as a founding member of the icc it, it makes sense that trudeau is obviously going to prop it up he's always like as far as the record goes trudeau has been very consistent with uh upholding international rulings and following suit with suit with uh all of the other international leaders on that thing but again with america that's part and parcel for its relationship with israel and the icc for that matter america in the past has uh you know, refuse to acknowledge the ICC as having jurisdiction over it and Israel. And so this is not something that surprises me at all. Huh. Um, yeah, we got you on for the, the light stuff. Uh, speaking of, uh, yeah. what did you, you went to a concert last night. What was that all about? Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson. Yeah, right. yeah. He's, uh, I don't want to call him a country artist, but like in some regards, I guess he is. But it's, a, you know, he's a really good, talented musician. It was at Massey Hall and he did a bunch of covers. He did Purple Rain. He did some Roy Orbis and stuff too and it was just like a three hour jam more or less it was really probably the best concert i've been to in the last few years uh t swift concert was also going on last night how did i because we were talking about transit um and this is the last time i'm going to say it because i've said it on every show i've done this week i yep. was in vancouver last week yeah <laughs> uh, but the transit in vancouver uh sky train buses um pretty pretty good 
yeah, fairies. Um, you were having issues with uh, with the transit, and I find the same. Like getting from St. Catharines to Hamilton is nearly impossible. There's not a lot of direct bus routes. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of di direct bus routes to Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, it, really eye opening, just to say like. I don't want to drive my car into Toronto, especially on a Taylor Absolutely Swift concert. Absolutely not. No, right? no, God. No. Um, but you said you left at 11:30. You didn't get back till two. Yeah, the show got out at 11:30. There was obviously a bunch of bump and grind with all the Swifties <laughs> on the TTC and stuff like that. And the Raptors game, I think, that ended at the same time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't really notice that many jerseys out in the field, but uh, <laughs> no, it, it was there was a lot of people. There was a lot of people commuting to and from. And yeah, just getting back to Hamilton sucked. It was. A, <laughs> I didn't get into my front door until about 2 a.m. I'm here today. <laughs> Come on, like do the math. I'm definitely tired. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd love to see transit just get improved upon, like some kind of high speed rail or something. Yeah, you know that would be great. Or like even for you, I mean, a ferry system. Uh, they've been Lincoln, talking. Uh, uh, Roger, Niagara, Roger, St. Catharines. Come on. Listen, I'm only they're doing it out west. I'm You're only just 32 in years old, but uh, they've been talking about a ferry from St. Catharines to Toronto for about 32 years of my a life. High speed so. hover boat. You'll be oh, a billionaire God. if you yeah. come up with the idea. They've, so they've pitched this idea several times. They've, they've, there's like, there's, if you look it up right now, there is a. Let's do this right now. Sorry, this isn't, uh, this isn't great uh, podcast. Hovercraft Niagara is the company. Hoverlink Ontario. Incorporated. It is a high speed weatherproof hovercraft service that transports <laughs> up to 180 passengers across Lake Ontario in only 30 minutes. Where so, the hell is it? So, as of May 2024, the uh, service was uh, this is from Niagara now. This service uh, still afloat, says oh a God. promoter. Great. Come great, on. Great we need pun. it. We need it. We need great it. Great headline pun. Um, on that transit rant, what do you got going on this weekend? You're here? Uh, so, yeah, we've got a bit of a work function tonight, some axe throwing. Tomorrow, i got a buddy's birthday. Sunday, I'm back doing some VJing for the weekend. VJing. Uh, I yeah. should point out, man, you're doing a great job on the VJ stuff. Oh, hey, thanks. Um, yeah, I've got a long ways to go, but, yeah, it's nice yeah, to Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's nice to see you lead the 6 o'clock. Yeah, it, and it's great. How are you feeling about it? Like, what was... Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling yeah. good. You know, it's been a rapid kind of uh, move from where I started out, you know, back in December of last year with CH to where I am now. But uh, I appreciate it, and I like it, and I feel like it's kind of like just the universe is calling for me it feels like a natural <laughs> thing for me to do i, I like doing it and the vibes the aura it's all there that's right? just it man it's like seldom you actually work a job that you enjoy so if you get to be passionate about it really, are hey, you really man, you're doing a great job so keep it up thanks and Lee. like heavy stuff too police shootings like that's not easy you're not doing the no, it, it stuff you're doing that was it was, that was great coverage that you had there man thanks man. um you got a, a work party to get ready for by the way that was the first time i met you it was the work christmas party last year yeah you came bowling that's <laughs> yeah, i hadn't even started hadn't even started yet I remember uh, Adam came out to me and he's like, you, and you're coming to the work party? <laughs> I'm just super Adam. Yeah, about Greg it. was introducing our boss. Greg was coming around. He's like, yeah, this is uh, Roger. He uh, he works here now. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, great. But great to see you. One year now. You've been here one year almost. In December. In December, December 18th, exactly. All right, buddy. You still got work to do for the show, so go yeah, do thanks. that. All Take right. Care. All right. My thanks to Roger Collins uh, for joining me today. And hey, my thanks to you as well, because we could not do the show without your support. So while you're here, make sure you like and subscribe to CHCH Podcast. So you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great Great shows we have for you, including a, a great couple of episodes of uh, Newsmakers. Oh, I should promote uh, Trending Now first. Uh, that is our social media channels. You can find it on X and YouTube. And once you subscribe to those, then you can subscribe to CHCH Podcast by going to chch.com slash podcasts. Or if you're watching this, just scanning the QR code on your screen. All right, my thanks to Justin Peeler for directing today's episode. And one more time, thank you for joining us. From all of us here at CHCH, I'm Louis Bucko. Have a great weekend.